Hello everyone and thanks for visiting Bluebeam Back to Basics. Today we'll be talking about Bluebeam Studio Sessions and what you should know before you create or participate in a studio session. For those of you I have not met personally, you can reach me at that phone number and email address and we encourage you to visit our website where you can learn all about our Bluebeam training program. We're going to start this conversation about studio sessions working on a local file because that's where a vast majority of these decisions need to be made and executed before the file gets uploaded to a studio session. And here's a couple of examples of why. This is just a simple PDF. My interface currently has one custom column and that was created by going to markup list, columns, manage columns, and when I'm working locally there's two tabs under Manage Columns, Display Order and Custom Columns. When you go to a studio session and you go to this exact same interface, Markups, Columns, Manage, this second column will not be there. It is not allowed to access and manipulate while in a studio session. You'll only see the display order tab. So anything you want to do at all regarding the creation or editing of a custom column, you need to do it here in the document before that document gets uploaded to a studio session. Now once the document is uploaded, you can draw markups and, and you can manipulate the information in that column. You just cannot manipulate the column itself or create or add any additional custom columns. Another thing that happens locally that will not happen in a studio session unless it's set up properly are the use of named layers with markups and tool sets. In this example, I've got two tool sets. I've got one for project managers and one for inspectors. Every markup in there is set to create that new markup on a specifically named layer. And if that layer does not already exist, it will automatically be created. That happens when you're working locally. That will not happen once you're in a studio session. So if you intend to use tool sets with specifically named layers and have that enforceable, those named layers must exist in the file before it's uploaded to a studio session. Let me show you an example of that. I want to be able to see, like right now, my file has no named layers. So if I go back to here and I create a new markup that is supposed to be on a layer named inspectors, it actually did it and I'll go back to the layer tab so that you can see that layer panel and see that the layer called inspectors that wasn't there automatically got created. Now if I go back and I use this one which puts markups on a layer called project managers it will do the same thing it will create a layer called project managers but I'm not going to do that because I want to show you the result of that in this studio session I'm about to start another thing I'm going to do before we get up there is to place two more clouds using the inspector markups so I've got one cloud two clouds and now I have a total of three clouds. In particular, I've got three clouds that were created locally before the file was uploaded to a studio session. So I'm going to save this. It's going to ask me if I want to anyway, so I might as well. And now I'm going to go create a studio session and upload this file to it. So I'll go to the Studio panel, I'll switch from Studio Projects to Studio Sessions, and I'll create a new Studio Session. I'll give it a name, I'll tell it to take the open file, and none of this matters, so I'll just accept the defaults and move past it. I'm not going to invite anyone to this. All I wanted to achieve has been achieved. We've created a Studio Session, we've uploaded a copy of this local document which is currently open still to the cloud and now we'll go look at the copied file up in the cloud and as soon as I start working on it there's a few things that you need to notice I'm going to split the main window in half so that I've got the local copy of the file on the left and the cloud based studio session based copy of the file on the right I can tell that from the tab 
the one that's in the cloud in a studio session has that whiteboard icon as part of the tab and if I hover it doesn't show me a path where that file is located if I go to the left there is no whiteboard icon and if I hover it shows me the folder path to where that file is located so I can tell the difference when I'm on the left working on a local file if I go to markup list columns and manage columns I still have access to both of those features but if I get out of that and go back to the cloud, now I'm in a studio session. If I go to markup list and columns and manage columns, it's not there. There's nothing I can do once a file is actually in a studio session to create or alter the properties of custom columns. My only choice would be to delete this file, make the change on the local copy, and then upload it again or start a new session. Be forewarned about that. Now, let's go and talk about the layers. I'm going to go to the file on the left, which is local. I'm going to go to my tool set called Project Managers, and if I check the layers, there isn't a layer currently called Project Managers. But if I draw this red cloud in there, it automatically got created because that was part of the standard for the tool set. Now I'm going to leave the local machine and I'm going to go back to the cloud. Now that I'm here, if I go look at the layers, there's still just the one layer that was automatically created when I drew these markups. If I go back to the tool set now and I draw a red cloud, hoping that it will create that red cloud on the properly named layer, and if not create it, that is not going to happen. If I now go look at layers, it wasn't there, it wasn't previously con existing before the file was taken to the cloud, so as a result, it can't put it on a layer called project managers. Again, I would have needed to make sure this file had the properly named layer before I took it up there. Now my only choices are again to either go back to the studio and get rid of this file and upload a new version or completely start a new session where everything is set up properly. But those aren't the only things that you can't do once you're in a studio session. The other things are you cannot manipulate PDF content of the original document when you're in a studio session. If I go back to the left where I'm working locally and I choose from my edit menus that I've got at the top up here, if I say erase some of this content and I tell it to erase part of that original PDF, that's perfectly acceptable because I'm working on a local machine. But if I go to a file that's in a studio session, all of those editing. Those PDF content editing tools are disabled because that is not an allowed feature of working within a studio session. The other thing I can do when I'm working locally, so I'm back to the file on the left, is I could place a digital signature and I could sign this document any number of different ways with my digital signatures. But that is also considered a PDF content manipulation and is therefore not allowed in a studio session. So if I go back to the cloud in a studio session and I look at my digital signature tool, it is also disabled because it cannot be accessed and used from within a studio session. Now something else that may surprise you is what you can and cannot do with not only other people's markups but with your own from within a studio session. Now if you remember when I uploaded this file originally to the studio session it had three blue clouds. That's it. So those were there before we went to the studio session. After it was there I came back here and drew a red cloud and then I also went back to the studio session window and I drew a red cloud there. So these three blue clouds were drawn before the file was uploaded and this red one was drawn after the file was uploaded but they were all drawn by me and I can tell that right here under author at the bottom of the screen but here's the interesting part if you're unaware of it when you're in a studio session no one else can manipulate my markups and I cannot manipulate their markups Every, just about everybody should know that already but what you may not know what might catch you by surprise is that you cannot manipulate even your own markups that were created created prior to the file being uploaded to a studio session. So of these four markups, I can select the red one that was drawn after 
the file had been uploaded to the studio session. And I can delete it, I can modify it, I can do whatever I want to with it because I created it after the file was up there. And you'll even notice that the little control points are yellow and blue and, and they're ready to go. But these three blue clouds that I drew prior to uploading the file, if I select any of those, even though I'm the author, because I did it before they were uploaded to the session, they are not manipulatable even by me. So do not let that catch you by surprise. And that's the whole point of, of this little short video is to give you some tips, things to think about and make sure that uh, everything is set up properly before you load a, a file to a studio session. Now, some of these things are really ideal for using with Bluebeam scripting language of the Bluebeam Review Extreme Edition if you have that. You'll notice in my list of scripts that I've created and saved, I've got a button right here that says, okay, let's make sure everything is set up properly for layers and let's make sure that everything is set up properly for my custom columns just in case there's something missing from my established standards for a particular project that I'm working on. All it takes for me with these scripts is to hit two buttons and then then I upload the, I create this studio session, I upload the file, and I'm assured that I'm good to go with all of my established parameters. That's it. I hope you find this video helpful, and you'll review the other videos available as well.